welcome back to the studio. All right, today's vlog, it's just the full review of the Nike Wild Horse 5. A lot of times I'll do some outside filming, but today it's Saturday, just keeping it simple, you know, spending time with the family, just trying to relax. You know what I mean? It's like it's good on the weekends to just disconnect a little bit. So that is what I'm doing today. But before we dive in, just got to clear the air a little bit. Uh, well, first of all, it's amazing. We're doing the first full review and I think three months of a shoe. I've done a lot of first impressions of the la over the last two weeks, let's say, but uh, because of my foot injury, I, I, haven't been, I haven't been able to take a running shoe past 50 miles until yesterday in the Nike Wild Horse 5, but there's a lot of new subscribers, welcome, and so there's a little confusion yesterday on, I noticed in the comments under the uh, Salming Trail 5 first impression, uh, that was five days ago, I believe, Basically what I do, just so you know, if you're new, I do two videos for every single running shoe that I test. A first impression video, and that's just after my first run, okay? Just out of the box, taking it out on the first steps, like I did with the Nike Next Percent, uh, gosh, three days ago now. And then after 50 miles and just putting it out there, if you're watching other YouTubers review running shoes, I'd recommend to make sure that the people that are doing uh, running shoe reviews for you, that they tell you how many miles or kilometers they're putting into the shoe. Because if they're just taking it out for one run of six miles or two runs of 13 miles, in my opinion, that's just not quite enough for a full review, okay? Now, I do first impressions and then I wait for that 50 mile mark for the full review. And then, if I really love the shoe, like the Speed Cross 5 I'm looking at, most likely the Hoka Rincon. Uh, what else? There's a lot of shoes that I can tell I'm gonna like a lot, and therefore, if I take it to 100 miles or 200 miles, then I start doing uh, testing, like time trial testing and speed tests and eventually running shoe battles, okay? So I just wanted to clear the air there because there was a little confusion uh, yesterday in the comments. All right, I love you guys. Here we are, let's rock and roll, Nike. Wild Horse 5, full review after 50 miles. First of all, let's jump into those specs. The drop on the shoe, unbelievable, eight millimeters. That's what I'm talking about. That is the sweet spot for me. We're looking at a 28 millimeter stack height in the heel and 20 millimeter in the forefoot, all right? So that's a nice, perfect slope inside a shoe, at least for a trainer. For racing, that's a different story for me, but for a trainer, I love that six to eight millimeter range. For weight, we're looking at just under nine ounces in my size or 254 grams. For size nine in men's, we're looking at 10.1 ounces or 286 grams. So pretty, I would say actually, well, it's pretty par for the course for trail running shoes. Um, maybe slightly on the light side, which is a good thing, but most trail shoes in my size fall in that I would say 10 and a half to 11 and a half ounce range for weight. And so the upper on this Wild Horse 5 has this multi-layer fabric with quite a bit of overlay action going on, especially through this toe box. That's the blue, anywhere there's blue on this upper, that is a synthetic, really, really thin rubber to help with, with water resistance. But everybody, I didn't have a lot of great success yesterday keeping my feet dry. So I'm thinking like compared to, okay, I'm just gonna say it, compared to the Salming Trail 5, which is right here, this Salming Trail 5 kept my feet much, much more uh, dry, much drier compared to the Wild Horse 5, which is, which is fine because I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna use this shoe moving forward here in a minute. Uh, so I'm not expecting my feet to be completely dry after running up a snowy 14,000 foot mountain, but just putting it out there, it wasn't as water resistant as I might have expected given how much overlay is happening through the toe box and even, even toward the back here through the midfoot. And let's talk real quick about the midsole. Okay, it's this Phylon EVA midsole foam here. It's a white here on the shoe. Uh, and then, yes, there's a rock plate inside this forefoot, okay? So that is good. Nice work, Nike. I didn't, I didn't have any sharp rocks poke the bottom of my foot yesterday, and I was going over some pretty intense terrain. Like, it was not a buffed out trail by any means. So, nice work on the rock plate. I'd love to see what the rock plate actually looks like inside the shoe. Uh, and then, a Zoom Air unit in the heel, okay? And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, but a nice Zoom Air unit here in the heel for a little more cushion uh, through your gait cycle. And for the outsole, the bottom of the shoe, really critical for trail running shoes, of course. 
I love what Nike's doing here with the lug pattern. So, you know, lug depth is important. So how, how deep are the lugs on the bottom of the shoe? How much do they protrude out of the bottom? But I also, now I need to do a little more thinking and testing, but I also think how the lugs are actually laid out on the shoe is also critically important. And I just like what Nike is doing here with this lug pattern. And in fact, I like how they, the lugs kind of flare out here on the back near the heel, because if you're traversing a trail that has a, a gradient to it, a slope to it, this is gonna help. I, it's hard to show you, but it's basically these lugs kind of wrap around the edge of the, uh, I guess I should say, okay, the beveled edge of, the, which is not really beveled at all. It's rounded off and it allows those lugs to kind of wrap around, which I like. I, I like it a lot. So good work there, Nike, once again, on the outsole. And as far as the positive and the negative or the drawback for the Wild Horse 5, how the padding inside the shoe, it's not too much, but not too little. It kind of it ties into the tongue, what I just mentioned. I'm not sure what they did exactly as far as how they sewed the upper together and the amount of padding they chose to put into it, but it's just spot on as far as the comfort of the upper. It just, it hugs the foot so well. And okay, I won't mention the Terra Kiger 5 quite yet. I'll bring that up in a minute, but anyway, it is spot on. And the drawback. Okay, I'm getting reports from the field that some folks are gonna be running 100 miles, 100 mile trail races in the Wild Horse 5. That's amazing, nice work. I'm not sure I would take, I don't think I would wear the Wild Horse 5 for a 100 mile race, but if your feet and your legs can handle that, kudos to you, like that is good work. For me, after 15 miles and yesterday 17 miles, my legs were starting to feel it a little bit. I was yearning for a little more cushion through that midsole, specifically in the heel. Even though it has the Zoom Air unit in there, instead of 28 millimeter stack height, I'm wondering, Nike, if we could bump that up to 30 or 31 or 30, eh, maybe not 32, 30 to 31, just to provide a little more cush through the gait cycle. All right, so anyway, that's my only drawback, really, of the entire shoe, is that I was desiring a little more cushion in the heel specifically. The forefoot was good, but in the heel specifically. And how will I use the Nike Wild Horse 5 moving forward? You ready for this? Not on steep mountains, that is for sure. It did well right, yesterday, but it are. didn't do great, okay? Here's the deal. If you live near Balboa Park in San Diego, Van Cortland Park in New York City, uh, the two forest parks in St. Louis and Portland, so I've been able to run in all four of those parks across the United States. Sorry for everyone outside the U.S., but those are parks that are very tame but they have hills but they're tame parks nice buffed out trails this shoe is going to be perfect for running in parks that okay here we go commuter commuter is the key word because this shoe would be perfect to commute to the trails so here in denver we have a lot of trails that are close to the city and to the foot so we live right next to the foothills and if you need to travel from your house or your apartment if you need to travel, let's say two miles or three miles on pavement and concrete in order to get to the trails, this will be perfect. So you can commute to the trails. So let's say it's 20% to the trails, 80% trail run, and then 20% back. Or no, that's over. And let's say it's 10% to the trails, 80% uh, on the trails, and then 10% back. So that's 100% of your run. This shoe is gonna be perfect for commuting to the dirt on pavement or concrete. It's just, uh, I'm really feeling that way and not so much strictly on the dirt, all right? And for that score for the Nike Wild Horse 5, I was struggling a little bit with this, but we're gonna go with seven out of 10, all right? Seven out of 10, and the price point, $110. I like it, I like it a lot. And yes, it's available down below from Running Warehouse. If it was 120, eh, I wouldn't be nearly as excited, but 110, I think is spot on for the Nike Wild Horse 5. All right, question of the day. Here we go, one second. We got the Peg 36 Trail, we got the Terra Kiger 5, and we got the Wild Horse 5. All right, what are you, did I say Peg 36 Trail? Yeah, the Peg 36 Trail here. Which of these three are you most likely to pick up if you're gonna pick up any of them? And I know there's folks out there that are not Nike fans, and that is just fine. But if you are, which of these three would you most likely be interested in picking up and that's part one. Part two, would you like me to compare all three of these shoes next week? All right. How does that sound? Because I'm feeling close. I need one more run in both of these before I feel confident enough to give you the right information 
to compare these three. All right, thanks for being here, everybody. I love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a beautiful weekend. I hope your long run, a lot of people do their long runs on, on the weekend. I hope your long run was great wherever you're at around the world, running and watching. All right, thanks guys. Ah, oh, what a great, crazy world we live in. Oh man, it's, I just can't believe what's happening here on the YouTube. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Woo! Actually, let's, let's get this guy. Boom.